Welcome, my name is Avery and this is the LUT workflow series part two. In the last part, we talked about technical LUTs and today we're talking about creative LUTs. There's a fair bit to cover, so let's jump in. There are two general types of creative LUTs that you'll find out there. There are Rec. 709 LUTs, and these can be used on any generic Rec. 709 image. And then there are creative input LUTs, and these are designed for specific cameras and camera profiles. We're gonna talk about both in this tutorial, but I'm gonna start with the Rec. 709 LUT. So let's go ahead and reset this grade. This footage was shot on the Blackmagic Cinema camera. So step one is to convert this log image into Rec. 709. Let's go ahead and make two nodes and add a conversion LUT in the second, just to keep things consistent with the last tutorial. Now, it might be tempting to come straight in and apply our creative LUT right away, but the big problem is that this shot hasn't been balanced first. You can see it's very warm and it's a little bit underexposed. The thing about LUTs is they don't have the ability to adjust or compensate for changes in your footage. So you need to make sure that you've balanced the footage manually before applying any creative looks. I'll add a new node and I'm gonna address the exposure first. I'll bring up my gain a little bit and bring up the gamma just so those shadows aren't quite so crushed. Then I'll make another node and we'll address the color temperature issue. So I'll cool this shot off using the temperature slider and it looks like we still need to take some color out so I'll use the gamma wheel and push this towards blue and that's looking pretty good. And now that the image is finally balanced, we can add one more node and apply our creative LUT. So I'll right click, go to 3D LUT, creative LUTs, and I'm gonna apply this kind of cold green uh, Fincher inspired LUT. Now, like most creative LUTs, this is a very strong look right out of the box. And this is done on purpose to give you the freedom to adjust how strong you want that look to be. Now, by default, when you apply a LUT, it's at maximum strength. However, if you want to adjust that, you can go to the key tab and under the key output, you can adjust the gain parameter. So you can see if I take that down to zero, our LUT is having no effect on the image. And if I take it up to one, now we're at full strength. If I take it above one, there's no change. Okay, so your range is just from zero to one. So I'm gonna take this down and then slowly bring it up to where that look is blending nicely with the shot and about 0.56, that looks pretty good. So here is before the LUT and here's after. Now often when you're color grading, you're not just gonna stop at the creative LUT. You'll also want to add your own creative adjustments into the mix. So now the big question is, do we make our creative adjustments before or after the LUT? And the answer is you can do either but each gives a different result. So to help show you this, I'm gonna reset this node and I'm gonna apply a LUT that makes my image black and white. So if we make a creative adjustment before this LUT, and let's say I start adding a bunch of color into my highlights, you can see that it is having some effect on the image, but all of those creative adjustments are being filtered through the LUT before being outputted. So even though I'm adding color, that LUT is exerting a lot of influence over my creative adjustments, and it's basically dictating the final result. Now, if I remove this and I start making my corrections after the LUT, now the LUT doesn't have any influence over my corrections, and I can start adding whatever colors and whatever adjustments I wanna make. So the general rule is, if you want the look of your creative LUT to be the final result, then you'll want to apply the LUT at the end of your grading process and make all of your corrections before. But if you just want to use your creative LUT as a starting place for your own grade, then you want to apply the LUT at the beginning of the grade and then apply your own corrections after. The last type of creative LUT I want to look at is the creative input LUT. And this is a LUT that not only applies a creative look, but also converts our image from log to rec 709 all in a single step. So to use these LUTs, we'll apply them just like we would any other input LUT. So I'll make two nodes, and then I'll apply my creative input LUT in the second. There we go. Now, this is actually the exact same creative look as our Rec. 709 LUT, but you notice it's giving us a very different result, and that's because we haven't balanced our footage yet. 
And this is where we encounter our first big problem. Because the question is, do we balance the image before this input LUT has been applied or after? Well, if you watched part one of this series, you know that trying to make your corrections before a Rec. 7 to 9 conversion isn't always the best idea, because now you're going to be working in your camera's proprietary color space. But at the same time, if we try to make a correction after this LUT, now we're trying to balance an image that's already had a creative look applied to it. So all of our colors are going to be much more difficult to balance. So already we're starting to make some compromises in our workflow. In this case, I think the best workflow for these types of LUTs is to do your general image balance before the LUT. So here we can address the underexposure. And we can also address the color balance. And then after, if we need to make specific uh, secondary corrections, if we need to use the qualifier to address the skin tones or wardrobe, we can make those corrections after the LUT. But keep in mind that this is not an ideal workflow and it won't give you the same results. There's also a second important issue with these LUTs, and that is that we can't control the intensity of our creative look without also affecting our Rec. 7 to 9 conversion. So if I go to where my LUT is applied, and I turn down my gain, we're left with essentially our original log image. This is of course because our Rec. 7 to 9 conversion and our creative look are blended together into the same LUT. So we can't control one without affecting the other. Ultimately, even though these LUTs are very convenient, and they're great for some people like editors, they start to introduce some problems. This is because they condense so much of the process into a single step that you lose a lot of the crucial control that you need to get the most out of your image. Now, before I sign off, I want to make one quick note about creative LUTs in general. I think that creative LUTs are opening up people's eyes to the power of color grading, and they're getting people really excited about learning this process. But the ultimate goal is to understand the process well enough to create your own looks without the assistance of a LUT. Because keep in mind that every project is going to be different and you won't always have the perfect LUT for what you're working on. But if you're a good enough colorist, you can create the exact look that matches and complements that project perfectly. So if you're a new colorist, keep that in mind. There's no problem at all with experimenting with creative LUTs. In fact, I encourage you to. But don't be afraid to also add in your own creative adjustments and your own grading into the mix, because it's your own creative skills that are really going to carry you further as an artist and as a professional. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. In part three, we're going to take a look at the entire LUT workflow inside Adobe Premiere. I'd also like to thank Frame.io for supporting this video. Frame.io is a video sharing and collaboration platform designed specifically for filmmakers. Just upload your assets, receive real-time feedback directly on your videos, then import that feedback straight into your editing timeline. No need to dig through endless email chains or worry about which revisions are most recent. Now you can just get to work and let the platform take care of the rest. If you'd like to try Frame.io for free, follow the link in the description and click on the little banner at the top of the page to instantly get an extended 30-day trial. Frame.io is video collaboration solved. My name is Avery Peck, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.